Hello everyone, I'm Ivan from Vozentech and today I'll be giving you a quick overview of some of the software features that we've built into the Microfiber 5 to truly make it the smartest smoke machine. Now just a quick word before we start. This guide is only going to cover the advanced software features of the Microfiber 5 Pro. If you're looking for the quick start guide where we go over the home screen and how to actually use the device, that is available as a separate video linked down below. To get to the normal settings menu, simply hold down on the mode button for about 3 seconds and that'll bring up a new interface. Now a few words about navigating through these settings. Uh, the mode button will cycle from one setting to the other. There are eight to be configured uh, and whenever you get to the last one, it'll just loop around to the first one. So click mode to change from settings, setting to setting. And whenever you've got the setting that you want to adjust selected, simply click select. That will cycle through the individual setting presets and allow you to configure it. Uh, whenever you're done, if you just want to return to the home screen, simply click on the smoke button and that brings you back. So let's start go over, going over the different settings uh, that can be adjusted. The first one when you bring up the uh, settings menu is the continuous mode. So what does that mean? That just simply allows you to select a uh, time that the microfogger will run for continuously after you press the button. So here I've just set continuous mode to four seconds and whenever I press the button, it'll run for about four seconds, well, exactly four seconds, and then shut off. Uh, so usually that's limited to 10 seconds, but if we turn off the uh, time limit, which I'll show you how to do later on, that's gonna unlock it for a longer time. So hopping back into our settings menu, we've got continuous mode set to four seconds. Now, if you have the continuous mode turned on, then uh, you will have access to the next two menu items. Uh, so the next one is delay, uh, quite self-explanatory as well. Uh, that'll just configure the time between you pressing the button and the continuous mode activating. So here I've set it to four seconds and let's see how that works. So we've got four seconds delay and four seconds continuous, which means that it's gonna count down from four and then activate. For the delay, uh, you can configure that to a much longer time, up to 15 minutes. So depending on your use case, that may be quite useful. Uh, so hopping back into the, our uh, settings menu, we've got continuous mode four, we've got delay uh, four, and then we've got the third one, and that is a loop. That just dictates how many loops of a certain preset we've got. So uh, I won't be using it now, but if we were to say do four loops, that means it'll count down from four, turn on for four seconds, and repeat this procedure four times. Uh, so once again, it is limited to five uh, loops without the, uh, with the time limit turned on. If you turn off the time limit, you can go up to 20 loops or an infinite continuous uh, loop cycle, which can be useful in certain applications. Uh, so those three settings, they work together, but you won't be able to use loop if you don't have delay and continuous mode configured. And similarly, you won't be able to use delay if you don't have a continuous mode selected. If you ever want to turn them off, uh, you can simply cycle through to the end by clicking select until you have a uh, zero loop, for example, or just off loop. Uh, if you want to reset all of the settings that we're talking about here, just hold both of the uh, buttons, the small buttons, the mode and select button for about five seconds, and that'll reset those so you don't have to individually cycle through each one. Moving on to the next setting, our RC channel. Uh, so by default, all four are selected. That just means that the remote control buttons, the A, B, C, D buttons, will adjust the power levels. Uh, usually the A button configures, uh, triggers the microfiber at the set power level on the device, and then B, C, D progressively uh, decrease the power level. So B is maximum power, C is medium power, and D is minimum power. If you click on select, you will be able to highlight an individual power level and that just means that the microfogger will now only turn on at the setting that is set on the home screen 
when you press that button. So for instance, if we have C selected, only the C button on the remote controller will uh, turn on the microfiber. Next up, we've got our accessory menu, uh, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, next up is the advanced menu, which I'll go over in just a moment as well. And the last menu item on the normal settings menu is the info screen. So here you've got a readout of the current software version, as well as the total runtime of the device. So that's how long the device has been uh, used for when generating smoke. Uh, and it'll give you the exact battery voltage if you're ever debugging or troubleshooting. So let's go deeper into the advanced settings menu. So this is just a collection of uh, settings options that you don't generally need to adjust on a daily basis. So we've grouped these together in an advanced menu to not clutter up the normal menu. So just click on the uh, select the advanced menu in the settings menu and click select to enter it. Just like the other menu, you can click on mode to change through the modes uh, and select to change to individual settings. The first one is called fan extended. Uh, so that's just a fan extended runtime and that just allows you to run the microfiber uh, and have the pump already running uh, for a few seconds afterwards. So let me show you how that works. Here we're just running the microfiber normally, but if I let go of the button, it'll keep on running the fan, the pump, for a few seconds afterwards. Now, why is this useful? If you're trying to create several bursts in quick succession, it will actually let you create smoke faster as the pump does not need to spool up to produce the airflow. Let me show you. So here we have one burst, I'm letting go, and the second burst, whenever I press the button again, uh, it appears a little bit quicker. It's marginal difference, but it can be quite useful in some circumstances. Uh, so going back into the advanced menu, you have a few different options there from zero seconds all the way up to 10 seconds. The next menu item is a remote program option. So if you've got a key fob remote running on a 433 megahertz uh, band, you will be able to configure it to work with the microfiber. Uh, to do that, you'll just click on select and follow the on-screen instructions where you just simply press the remote buttons on your custom remote control. Next one is remote control. Uh, so that just allows you to keep the remote control functionality on. You can turn it off if you're getting some sort of interference from someone else uh, and you don't want to trigger mic your microfiber, just select off. And the final setting is actually super useful and that's called trigger. Uh, so that just allows you to trigger continuous run times, delays, loops, uh, so automatic running using the remote control uh, key fob. So when you click on remote control and trigger, the A button will now trigger those automatic runtimes, whereas before it would only do it momentarily without uh, any effect from those settings. Next up is the time limit. So as we've discussed before, if you turn that off, it'll give you much longer runtimes uh, with the automatic runtime settings and it'll also stop the microfiber from locking out after 10 seconds of continuous use uh, when you're just using it normally using the main button. Next up, we've got charge lock. So generally when the microfiber is on charge, it will lock out and prevent you from running the device while it's charging. Uh, this setting changes that behavior and allows you to trigger it either by a, via remote control or using the main button uh, while it is charging. Generally, we always recommend keeping this setting on to prevent the microfiber from turning on while it's charging, as unless you're building it into some sort of custom device, you don't really want that to happen. Next up is the control cable. Uh, so by default, this is off, but if you've purchased one of our control cable accessories uh, and you select it to on, that'll allow you to use that accessory. Uh, so essentially just triggering the microfiber using the USB port. Next up is the temperature limit. Uh, so that just gives you the ability to increase the temperature limit to a higher level uh, if you're comfortable with doing so, uh, if you intend to use the microfiber for a longer period of time at a higher power level. Uh, usually we recommend keeping this at low to reduce wear and tear on the device. 
Next up is the power limit. So as I mentioned at the very beginning of this tutorial, uh, the top two power bars for the heating coil power will be grayed out whenever you start running the device. Uh, if you turn this power limit to off, those two top two power levels will be available immediately, even on a cold start. Uh, if you decide to turn it off, then just remember that the first few bursts, you should really keep them pretty short to avoid uh, the heating coil from wearing out. Uh, if you turn it off and you run it at full power right away, that can wear out the heating coil and you'll notice that uh, because the smoke will start smelling a little bit burnt. Usually the smoke should not smell of anything at all. And that sums it up for the advanced settings menu. Finally, we're on to our last menu, and that is the accessory menu, but it'll only be useful if you've got one of our color smoke attachments. So if you do, just slot the color smoke attachment on, navigate to the accessory menu, and here you will have all the options you need to start using that accessory. So the first thing you're gonna see is a selection of modes, uh, continuous or triggered. Continuous means that the color smoke attachment is always going to be on, a trigger just means that the color smoke attachment is only going to be on when you're actually producing smoke. The next option is a diffuser setting. That's for a future accessory, so you don't need to worry about it right now. Uh, but the following menu, menu setting is the uh, setting that changes the behavior of the lights. So here we have it at static, and as you can see, the lights are just statically on at the color that I already pre-selected. If we select blink, That'll just continuously blink the lights. Similarly, breathe will breathe the lights on and off. And fire, well, this sort of effect is just gonna change the lights continuously in a pretty random pattern. The next setting is the color setting. So uh, first, I'm gonna turn off the fire effect and just set it back to static so that we can easily see the color. And this is just a cycle through 360 degree, uh, 360, color hue options. Once you get to the very end of the 360 option loop, you will get to just white, a white preset, as well as a RGB preset. Uh, so the final RGB preset, as you can see, it cycles through a uh, spectrum of RGB colors. Now going back to zero, that just turns it red. Next up, we've got our cycle speed. So this changes how quickly it cycles through the uh, breathing or the blinking options. Uh, the fire option is affected as well. And the final option here is the RGB cycle speed. So if, when you have the RGB uh, color option selected, uh, that'll just change how quickly or how slowly the colors cycle through the spectrum. That pretty much sums it up for all of the accessory advanced and normal menu settings that the Microfogger 5 Pro has to offer. Uh, hopefully this has been informative uh, and helps you use the Microfogger, but if you have any other further questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or contact us using the information on our website. Thanks for watching.